guys, and welcome back to another episode of Total Control with SD Huesca. Now, I actually forgot to mention this, or I mentioned it, but I actually forgot to revisit it because I'm just like that, you see, in the last episode. And that was why we're using Mariano Bravo. Some of you might be thinking, that doesn't sound like a Danish bloke. Well, he sort of isn't. He's actually Argentinian. He was a character from my B67 save. I built up the profile for him to use as a manager for another save, which then ended up not happening. So I had the character already created, and I figured it'd be nice just to use him for this save as the manager. So he's an Argentinian player that was playing for B67. He essentially declared for Denmark later in his career, which is why he has joint nationality, which should give us a tiny little boost to scouting in both Argentina and Denmark, but not really. Our scouting is pretty, pretty sparse. Anyway, let's get going and set things up. So obviously we're going to do meetings and this sort of stuff. Um, this won't really tell us much about what's going on, but we do still need to do that so I can get into the responsibilities and everything. Love to learn more about the club. It's always useful. I don't want philosophies right about now. The last thing we need is philosophies. Oh, that's right. We're doing press conferences. Until I get bored of them. Okay, so we're going to go through this menu and set it all to me, basically. Uh, there's a few more that we can set on a different menu that I will control as well. Right, we're not going to be in control of youth and reserve teams because that would be just unrealistic. Uh, so we're not going to go over the top with this. Okay, so that's done. We're going to go and do the proper bit, though, right now. So responsibilities. I'm going to make sure basically every single thing is set to me. So transfers, that already would be outgoing, ingoing, scouting. Right, so I am in charge of that. Update you when the scouts are found. Obviously, we need him to tell us because otherwise that wouldn't work. Handle scouting meetings is all me. Training is all me. I'll be handling individual training for everything. And I'll be planning... The, I won't be planning the under-19 training because that's not really my responsibility. We'll leave that to the manager. But, and we'll leave that one as well because we're only going to be managing the first team squad. So I'll leave him to deal with that. We'll deal with the individuals of other stuff, though. Okay, so we are now in charge of everything, and we have to remember that we are, because things could go to crap without us, essentially. Thankfully, we're lacking injuries. Um, Young Herrera is the only player that we have who is injured at the moment. He's got a broken ankle, and he's going to be out for most of the... Well, the, most of the first half of the season. That's fine, because if we do need to play players in this position, we do have other players that are somewhat ahead of him, although he might play a different role. Right, so, preseason preparation. I will be selecting these from the basic ones and then editing them. It's rather, it's easier than building them up by hand, essentially, because that will need to change depending on when matches are scheduled. Because we've got a friendly against our B team, and that's not really what we wanted right about now. I would have preferred to, I should have skipped that, really. As you can tell, this is me learning stuff about this stuff as well. So you just have to bear with me sometimes. Honestly, I don't really want to concentrate on tactical just yet, because we don't actually have a tactic yet. And I'm probably going to go for a light we're going to go for a normal preseason schedule. We, again, we'll be changing this on the fly anyway. Obviously, that's we can do that later. Right, so there's a few players in the last year of their contracts, which I guess we should really handle right about now, to be honest. Um, George Polito, he's only on four grand a week. He's a rotation option, and he's definitely worth signing. Let's see how much he wants, though. Ten grand a week. Okay. We could probably put in some... I mean, unfortunately, they do have to have release clauses, do they not? I'd like to give him a bit of a higher release clause than that. Maybe I would let him keep that relegation release clause if he signed a longer deal, but... I do like to dangle international appearances because he's probably... But we can't take the risk of him getting one. So I like to dangle that in because it allows us just a little bit more leeway on wages. Oh, okay. See, this is what I mean. Sometimes you probably could have got more out of this deal. The problem is when you change things now. No, I feel like he is first team potential. So I'm all right with changing his squad status. Usually I would go for backup, but I think he's strong enough for now. Because I do think it's important that we get him on a new deal. This guy, however, Miramon, he can play on a variety of positions. And I think we kind of need that. But he is on big wages as it is, for us anyway. Um, that would be a three-year extension. He's, th he's 29, so he'd be 32. He doesn't want a relegation release clause. We probably didn't need to put that in there at all, to be honest. I think we can maybe up this release clause. I don't want to put too many of those wage clauses, uh, the international cap ones, in, in this save. A 4.9 million release clause. In that case, I'm not giving you as much wages. Okay, he's sell for less wages. Uh, the release clause is... Eh. We'll leave that for now and we can revisit some of these other contracts later on towards uh, the Christmas period where we sort of see how the squad's balancing out. So I'm going to be scheduling a friendly on Saturday, which will go in here. Uh, so we can change some of this stuff around. So first things first, friendly, poor team. Right, very small reputation team, foreign. Sure, why not? It's weird that there's no like, um, like domestic teams, but okay. So I should explain. The reason I want to schedule a, a, a friendly against a really poor quality team is is that what the way I like to do my first season setup is that I'll play the first two friendlies against poor quality teams. That way I can kind of experiment with the tactics without having to worry too much about the other side of things. Then once I've got some sort of shape and tactic I'm happy with, then I can take it into some more teams that are a bit more parity. And once we've kind of got it at that point, then I will adjust between better teams, worse teams, and average teams uh, to us to sort of iron out any kinks after that. That's generally the process I go through. We probably won't actually play or watch the Huesca under-19s game because I just don't think that's going to tell us much because we can't really do much tactically for that anyway. But the other thing is, you can see that we've got a lot of gaps in the scouting, which we're going to be having to fill immediately. In fact, we don't even have a head of youth development here. But we're going to do the scouting first, that way I can assign them. 
we want for scouts anyway. These two and adaptability. Adaptability is important because as far as I'm aware, that is what helps them gain knowledge of new countries. So we can send these guys, the guy with high adaptability, to countries that we don't really have a huge scouting knowledge of. Like our regional knowledge is, is non-existent. It's Spain based on our scouts and then Denmark and Argentina because of me. So, since we've got Spain covered, I'm not going to look for other scouts that have got big knowledge of Spain. I want to find scouts that have got big knowledge of other countries. Got a couple of guys with 20 here. This Paolo Tremolada guy, he has Italian knowledge. 39 years old, he's unemployed, was at Milan for a bit. He'll probably want big money, but we'll see. Okay, he's taking 2.8k a week. I feel, I realise that's a lot, but I feel like we're going to need to spend some money in this area in order to get these players. This guy sounds Finnish. Oh, he's got some good knowledge. Oh, she. Okay, my apologies to Vasiliki Papa. I love that her, she's actually in my face pack too. So she's a Greek scout. Decent judging player potential. These are great. Good adaptability too. Would bring us a wealth of knowledge about Greece, for example. Cyprus, decent knowledge of France, Serbia. There's a lot of extra, there's a lot of reasons why I think she'd be good for us. There we go. Sometimes you can just get what you want from that. I usually undercut them by a reasonable amount. And if they start to budge, then we can sort of keep them down there. So hopefully she'll sign for us too. France, good knowledge of the Ivory Coast, Senegal. Some African knowledge could be very useful. 3k a week, he's, he's not super bothered. There we go. He's set off for the same wage. You just got to keep lowballing them. And he's got good knowledge of uh, South America. And he's currently... Ma uh, hmm. How much is he on? 350. He surely would want to join. 18,000 pounds in compensation. I don't even care. That would be a massive deal. He would give us some extra knowledge, and this would really improve our scouting instantly. This guy here probably looks the best, Kike Malo. Uh, he's a, oh, a regen. Okay, cool. He might not want that much money either. Okay, maybe not. Okay, so that would be perfect for us. Sports scientist. We want a head of sports science, and we want a sports scientist to go with it. That's fine. Head of sports science. He wouldn't want too much money. Put him a bit more longer contract, though. And to go with him, I wouldn't mind this guy because he's got great adaptability. And he, oh, he wants decent. Mm. Okay, he wants a little bit more money because he's going to be a sports scientist rather than under 19s, but that's fine. Um, it's cheap. It's, you know, it's rather pay 500 than 1500 because he's barely, he's basically the same. Okay, so coaches, we want a head of youth development and some miscellaneous. Kind of looking at the youth development side of things, but we want other factors too. 55, so he might want large wages. Petro Peso's got solid man management as well. He'd want a lot less money. And it's not, it's a negligible difference. There we go, 1.1k. Really are penny pinching because we need this money for players too. So you can see where the areas where we're really struggling in is our technical ability. Uh, for one thing, technical coaching is very poor and just man management in general is quite poor. So the defensive side of things can definitely do with a workout, I think. Maybe good defensive fitness and technical. There's David Platt. And maybe we could get another guy who's got better defensive and fit, a better defensive and fitness stuff. David Platt would want super large money, though, wouldn't he? One point six. He's not that bad, actually. If he did sign, we could get him down to one point five. That might be all right, actually, for now. Fitness wasn't the biggest issue. We could always change that up as well. Attempt to avoid relegation, which should give us a bit less pressure. The cup, not much we can do about that. The training will obviously differ once we start to get towards the actual season, but for now, we're just going to keep it fairly simple. I'm going to probably put a midweek friendly in here, though, just some rest around it. This should help with the cohesion instantly. Okay. Um. Uh, no. Okay. Actually got away with it. Okay, that's helped with the, uh, the morale a little bit. That could definitely be useful. Honestly, I think the best thing we could do right now is start looking at the tactic and just get a basic shape built for that first match. That's the kind of system they want. And I kind of think that was probably the route we were going to have to go. We do have a good attacking midfielder, but Huampi is probably best on this right. And we could use an inside forward here. That's what my assistant recommends. And I honestly think that's probably the best shape we've got for our position. Now, there's a lot of work to be done within that, but I think that's probably the right way to go for now anyway. So we'll go with that just to get the tactics set. And we'll have a look at kind of what slots into that for now. We can adjust the positions on the fly. Juan Hernandez, I think it's undeniable that he will be our starting striker this year as an, in, as an advanced forward without a shadow of a doubt. On the left-hand side, it's going to be a toss-up between Galan and uh, Gaia. But they're both good for winger on support, I think. On this right-hand side, for example, we've got some options for the winger on support role. But I think we've also got other options for an inside forward potentially if we were to pick that kind of approach too with Miramon and Juanpi could play there as well. Then we could have an overlapping fullback on the right on attack. Say I went fullback attack on this side. Who have we got that could really slot in there? Ooh, Miramon, he's more of a ball winning midfielder and I'd be happy to let him play that role to be honest. Then we can have an advanced playmaker here and then a CM next to it that we can kind of mess with. This is essentially how I go about these things. I just slot things in until I sort of see what's building up. It's not a scientific approach and I don't advise you do it as well, but this is just what I do. Because I think I want a ball playing defender at the back. Um, just in general. Because that way, it will give us more room for Insua. And then we can have Etieta next to him. I don't know if there's any restrictions on the number of lone players in your squad. To be fair, Miramon isn't good at any of these roles particularly. So I think a fullback on attack would make the most of his attacking prowess. I think I want my advanced playmaker on this side, on attack, to allow us to get a bit further forward. And I'm going to have the CM on this side. Um, we can adjust his tactic his stuff based on his actual attributes so that's a decent approach and then we can have Juanpi on the right yeah we've got Alexander Ivanovic okay 
that's a general approach that we're going to go with for now and then we can kind of build into a tactic based on this and then slowly start tweaking things there'll be a lot of changes before the season starts but this is the kind of uh, the way i slowly build things up just by looking to get players in their right positions i do think though that we might need to look for some slightly more defensively stable fullbacks our mentality is going to be cautious because we're going to have to be playing on the break in most of these matches and i feel like we're going to have to have that kind of approach in games it's just we're going to have to be solid we're going to have a slightly wider attacking width because we're playing with that width. Approach play, I feel like passing into space is probably our best result for now. I'm going to turn all of these on and off and we can adjust on the fly. I want to overlap right maybe, but I don't really want my left-sided wingback overlapping because, the, again, it would compromise us from a defensive standpoint. And I think low crosses is probably going to be our best bet because most of our players are not the tallest. When transition has been lost, we're going to regroup because we do not want to be getting caught pushing even further up. And we'll definitely be countering when we win it. I'm going to play a slightly deeper line. Um, because we're going to try and sit and soak up pressure. We have a slightly more narrow defensive width because I just don't know if we're going to be able to do much with the players out wide because they've got poorer tackling. We'll leave that for now. Okay, just a few little instructions turned on. We can adjust this on the fly again when we get into that first friendly, but I just wanted some basic stuff that we could use going into that first match so we can point out stuff and find little ways around things and just to give us a starting point, you know? I'm going to put a team bonding one in here because I just want to get the team cohesion up as high as possible, as fast as possible. One thing I like to do is the comparison one. And we can actually see where we're really lacking compared to the other players in this league. And I think that's quite important to do. So what I can see from this is that we're good in the air, which means I want to play a narrow defensive line to encourage them to cross the ball in so we can just nut it away at every possible opportunity. I think that's our best bet. Strikers-wise, we're actually about average. Decent long shots, good heading, good jumping reach. Anticipation is poor. Our off the ball is poor. Pace isn't bad, but the acceleration is poor. Just moved a couple of bits around. Got rid of a match practice one just to bring this one down a little bit on the intensity. And also to remove... Uh, the problem with putting the match preview on the same day is it seems to create a higher than 100% intensity, which we do not want. Okay, so we won the game 2-0. Uh, decent number of shots and chances created. But again, it's against the under-19, so this is completely irrelevant for me right now. So, I've just signed some under-19 staff as well. That's not that super relevant, but we've, the first of our scouts is going to be joining us, which is great. David Platt has failed to recommend anyone... I mean, you're a scout. It's literally your one job. But okay, Dolce has also joined us. Good stuff. Okay, sports scientist in. Data analyst in. Head of sports science in. Scout in. Durand in. Wow, we actually seem to have actually got everybody we wanted. So the staff is all filled up with the slots now. Look at this. We've actually got the fourth best attacking coaching set up in the, in the league. We can sort this out properly too. But first, let's sort out scouting because that's really important right now. There's a cool centre back here, but he's old and he's on a trial. I, I don't know. Right, so you can instantly see that our regional knowledge has vastly increased. Uh, India somehow from David Platt in there too. It's definitely better. Uh, it's going to take us a little while to build that up, I would suggest, but it's certainly improved a little bit. So with that in mind, we can now set out some of this stuff. So can he? Uh, I'm going to leave him on that, essentially, the next opposition, and the anal analysis, again, doing the same. But we're going to set these new people uh, to actually some roles that will fit their talent a little bit more. Now, of course, in upcoming videos, there's going to be less of the admin stuff, although there'll still be plenty more on the games. It's just because we're starting things off, there's a lot of things that we've got to do first, basically. But I feel like this is very important. So I'm just going to send him to Spain to look for first-team players, basically. Whereas we've got Kike Duran, who's got excellent attributes, and I'm going to be using him to go and find us a left-back. He'll also be operating in Spain, though, because he's got excellent stuff for this, and we do need some people actually scouting in so a fullback, that's what we need. I'm going to send uh, Vasiliki Papa to Greece just to look for some solid players. Ruben Dolce, I'm going to just send to a, a general scouting assignment to Argentina and maybe add on Uruguay afterwards, in fact. In fact, one at Paraguay too is good there. I'm going to send Paolo Tremolada to Italy to look for a, right, a left-back for us as well. And send uh, Jean-Philippe Durand over to France for a little bit. So that's, that's all right for now. We'll get reports when they're all done. I'm going to go and upgrade this to the world package for now. New contract signed for Polito, which is good. We've got a few players to come on trial, potentially. We'll also be using this throughout the season to sort of see if there's any players that are at high risk of injury that we can perhaps sort of avoid. Uh, although it appears that Juan Hernandez has literally injured himself today. Oh, God. Seven weeks to three months, Juan Hernandez, our, our striker, has just injured himself. How? Falling awkwardly in a training session. Literally the second or third session of the season that I deliberately... Oh, my God. Right, well, we're definitely going to have to look for a striker then, aren't we? God almighty. Okay, pretty much briefing. This is something we are going to be doing, of course. I just didn't want to do it for the other one. So we're going to handle the briefing. There was very little reaction from the squad to quite literally everything I've said. I don't know how we get... A... If anyone knows anything more about the pre-match briefings, do let me know because I'd be interested to learn. Okay. Let's go. Let's actually play our first friendly. It's going to be a bit of a weird lineup, I expect, because Hernandez is injured, uh, which means that we're going to have to play Enrique Gallego. A bit taller, so we actually could go for some slightly higher crosses, but I kind of want to 
go with what we're going to be doing. And I want to, ideally, we're going to be using a slightly faster striker than this. So we'll just go with this for today and just see how it looks. Okay, we've got no individual instructions on the players at the moment. We will add those as we go along, depending on what we need to do, particularly with the CM, because we've got to mould him into something. Okay, we're also going to be playing on comprehensive highlights. You won't see everything, obviously. Uh, I'll be editing like I normally do, but it will give me a chance. And I always play friendlies on comprehensive to get this extra stuff, basically. We can change things on the fly. We'll make notes about the way things are going as well. All sorts of things can come out of today's game. We'll, we'll look at the build-up play. And so Insua can definitely bring that ball out from the back. Now, obviously, they're a worse team than us. So you have to expect that we're going to get more of the ball against them than we perhaps we would do against the better one. Huampi does well there. Good strike. He loves bringing it forward and finds Huampi again. Huampi goes past one. Okay, that could be a good outlet for us, potentially. And, ooh, good save immediately. Huampi's corner. We're going to set up. Oh, there we go. We've got to go. Enrique Galejo with his lovely big header. Okay, so we've definitely got a different option available to us in the form of a Galejo uh, because... You know, he's a taller player. He's not going to be as quick, but he could definitely do stuff for us in the air in games. And that might actually be quite a useful thing to have on the bench if we can find a slightly pacier striker. I haven't set up any corner tactics or anything like that just yet. I'm just going to concentrate on the basic stuff first, try and build an actual approach for ourselves. It's about how we break in teams in these situations. Meijer is running right, really wide with the ball there, actually. Uh, allowed to keep going. And Galeco, nice work, actually. Good little breakaway. We caught them on the break. That's kind of what we're looking for with this style that we're going to look to play. Catching people on the break, obviously against the weaker team, fine that's going to happen Miero was able to just run all the way down the pitch with the ball when we did win it off of them but that's what I want to see I was getting the ball from deep bringing it forward lovely crossing for Calejo and there he is putting it in the back of the net good stuff Rivera Juanpi again cutting inside goes for the shot and he gets the goal good that's what I want to see him cutting inside taking some shots away. yeah we've had a few long shots today but that tends to happen against weaker sides no matter what you do um that's more like it. Three goals up inside 20 minutes is an encouraging start to the match. Nice little ball through from Rivera this time to find Juan P. Cuts inside, drives at the defence and gets himself a shot away. Good stuff. You can learn a lot from friendlies, even against poor teams. The thing I'm noticing here is you'll see that even our centre midfielders are acting as a screen right now, which is very, very difficult for them to break through. Even if they get the ball into these areas, we've got so many bodies in the right areas to defend this that we should be all right. And if they do get the ball out wide... They can whip crosses in for days, but we've got big, strong defenders. I think I do want him to distribute the ball quickly because it'll allow us to counter-attack teams a little bit more when we do get the ball back. Musto. Luisinho. Cleared away, and it's saved on the rebound. Mayero blocked again. Rampy whips one in. Galeco again. Good save. He's a danger man. Mayero blocked. Galeco again. Great goal. I mean, that's just deflected into his path, but he's still got in there and taken the opportunity, which is very, very encouraging indeed. Riviera. Ooh. Miramon. Go on, lad. Ball in. Oh, around the post. Good stuff. Wampy's hurt. Okay, he's got wrist ligament problems. Okay. Okay, half time falling up very, very comfortable. Considering this is the first friendly, I'm actually quite impressed with the overall output of the team. The goalkeeper being able to distribute to wherever he wants is creating spaces because no one can mark everybody, and that seems to be helping us a lot too. He's taking he's making the choice himself. I kind of want him to press a little bit more and roam. Just create some havoc. I also want Luisinho to cross from deep, or this position, to cross from deep and cross more often. It's about making these little changes during the games, just to try some stuff out, little things you notice as you go along. Although I think what I'm going to do is schedule a game in the next match against a more uh, parity-based opponent, since we're already looking pretty good. And we're not getting a lot of the ball. That's all right. This tactic is set up to simulate as if we weren't anyway. Maybe we could have targeted some slightly different types of crosses uh, in this game, but I we'll try that maybe in the next match. I'm not sure if the individual instructions I put on some of the players have affected us in a negative way or whether we've just lost a bit of stamina in this one. Ferrero, good save in the end. But we might have to take a look at that. The one change I did make was to distribute faster, and I think that's definitely made a difference. Over the top, Galeco could actually chase this. That's a good ball in behind. Can he finish? No. Nice idea, though. There we go. A 4-0 victory. There's a lot of encouraging signs about this. For a start, usually when I start these games, we get a lot of long shots and not a lot of good quality. Only seven long shots out of 25 is actually pretty good, to be honest, considering the style of play we were playing. We looked defensively solid. We were able to break in numbers when we got forward. I think we could do that more with a faster striker too. There's a lot of positives about this, though. I'm very much... I think we're on the right track. Quampi's injury is a couple of days. That's fine. We'll, we'll nurse him back in slowly, though. So, I'm going to schedule another friendly uh, for the next episode. Maybe two, in fact, for the next episode. And we'll, things will move up. It's just there's a lot of admin that needs to be done at the start of this one. Next episode, we're going to be doing scouting, taking a look at some of the players that are coming through, trying to find ourselves a left back and probably a striker, trying to find some lone players too. Anyone that could really strengthen us with our new scouts there too. We're going to be tweaking the tactic more in a friendly against a much, much better team. I'm going to try and find a team either from the top end of the Spanish second tier or another La Liga team. But I'm thinking maybe top end of the Spanish second tier would be a good place to go and then try and use 
use that to try and really tweak things and try and simulate some match conditions and bring some things forward. Because I think there's definitely ways this tactic can be improved, but I'm very, very positive about the way that we've started off. There's a lot of things I think we can build on, and that's very, very pleasing. So... I appreciate this is a very different style of video. Things will smoothen out as we get, as I get used to doing this kind of thing. It's a lot of uh, sitting here and recording and talking that I'm not used to doing uh, in quite such lengths. I've been recording for two hours for this episode to give you an idea. So it certainly ain't like I'm not putting work into it. Um, if you're looking forward to the rest of the season, uh, as we carry on, drop a like on the video. That'd be awesome. We're also doing a lot of, uh, a fair amount of youth intake scouting too, since there's so many leagues turned on uh, in terms of their players. So that's going to be interesting as well. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new too, and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.